And hey guys, what's up? I hope you're all doing great. This is a channel where we talk about anything related to comic books, like new releases, stories, writers, artists, or movies based on comic books. Today I'm gonna tell you a story, the story of Axis. And with no further ado, let's start. The Creative Team Axis is written by Rick Remender, and the art is done by Adam Kubert, Lainil Francis Yu, Terry Dodson, and Jim Chung. I have talked about Adam Kubert before in my dark web video, but all the others also do a great job. The art in every issue is amazing, and Axis is very well written. March to Axis How Everything Started Now let's talk about the story. I will talk about the main events, but I may also reference some tie-ins when this is needed. The story is divided into four parts if you also count the prelude, which is called March to Axis. Everything basically started in the Avengers vs X-Men limited series, when the Avengers and the X-Men went to war over the Phoenix Force. The X-Men wanted to use it, while the Avengers believed that it was too powerful to be controlled, and it turned out that they were right. Cyclops, who had become a host of the Phoenix Force, lost his mind and killed Charles Xavier, when he tried to help him. After they managed to defeat Cyclops and save the day, the Avengers and the X-Men made sure that nothing similar would ever happen and they finally learned how to cooperate. However, the Red Skull, Captain America's arts nemesis, took Xavier's body from his grave and stole his brain so that he could acquire his telepathic powers. Oh, and if you want me to talk about the Avengers vs X-Men story, just tell me in the comments. So, the Red Skull managed to gain Professor X's powers and by doing so, a part of Charles Xavier was now inside him. Yeah, we're talking about some crazy stuff right now. And it only gets worse. Magneto found out that the Red Skull was keeping a ton of mutants captive in Genosa, and made them wear colors that didn't let them use their powers. Magneto tried to free the imprisoned mutants and killed Johann Smith, the Red Skull. However, he didn't manage to kill the Red Skull and ended up in a cell. After he was rescued by the Avengers Unity Division, Magneto, along with Scarlet Witch, Rogue, and Havoc, attacked the Red Skull and his team. Magneto killed Smith's disciples and then brutally murdered him. However, he only unleashed a more powerful persona of the Red Skull, the Red Onslaught. If you're familiar with the Onslaught story, then you probably know that this means that things have gone really, really bad. And this is how Axis begins. Chapter 1. The Red Supremacy the Red Onslaught was extremely powerful and started to telepathically spread hate all over the world. People, even superheroes, would start fighting over the silliest things. When the Avengers found out about what was happening, they sent a team to Genosa to stop the Red Onslaught, while the other Avengers tried to keep people in control. When the Avengers arrived in Genosa, the Red Onslaught deployed the Stark Sentinels. What are they? They are Sentinels designed by Tony Stark, based on the knowledge he acquired about other heroes after the Civil War. But why would Tony make such thing? Well, even he didn't know they existed, as he constructed them under the influence of the Red Skull, who erased his memories after they were finished. The heroes soon realized that they were unstoppable, since they knew the weakness of everyone. Magneto left Genosa, and they thought that he betrayed them, but what he was really planning to do was to assemble a team of supervillains. The Stark Sentinels were programmed to destroy any superhero, but not villains, so they were the only way to stop them, and Magneto persuaded some villains to join him. Magneto's team consisted of Doctor Doom, Carnage, Mystique, Sabretooth, Jack-o'-lantern, Loki, the Enchantress, Hobgoblin, Absorbing Man, and the not-so-villainous Deadpool. Deadpool isn't really a villain, but he still isn't like the other heroes. He's more like an anti-hero, like the Punisher. Magneto was right, and his team managed to destroy one of the Sentinels, but their world wouldn't be safe, until the Red Onslaught was destroyed. Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange could cast an inversion spell that would cause the rotation of Axis and invert the Red Onslaught's personalities. This could put Charles Xavier in control, since a part of him was still alive inside Smith. However, the situation became more dangerous when the Red Onslaught mind controlled some of the people fighting there. Among them was Doctor Strange, who didn't manage to finish the spell. But Doctor Doom took his place and finished the spell. The spell worked and Smith was back to his Red Skull form. However, no one was certain about who really was in control, since Smith was unconscious and waking him up would be dangerous, 
if the Red Skull was still in there. The Avengers thought it would be better if they took him to the Avengers Tower, where they could examine him, but the X-Men wanted to keep him, in case Xavier was in control again. The mutants were furious, and it seemed that any bond between the X-Men and the Avengers didn't exist anymore. Want to know the best part of the whole thing? Even Sabanur, aka the Apocalypse Child, who was in Genosa during these events, went full Apocalypse mode. So yeah, Apocalypse is back. And while it seemed that things couldn't possibly get any worse, the spill that Scarlet Witch and Doctor Doom casted to Alder Smith's moral compass and bring back Xavier seemed to have affected everyone in Genosa. Chapter 2 Inversion After everyone returned to New York, there seemed to be some changes in their personalities. All the villains that were in Genosa started regretting all the suffering they caused in the past, while the heroes became selfish and brutal. For example, Cletus Cassidy, the serial killer known as Carnage, wanted to become a hero, and Roderick Kingsley, aka the Hub Goblin, even created the superhero team of his own. Sam Wilson, on the other hand, stopped caring about other people, and while he still fought criminals, he was way more violent and even killed some of them. Now, you're probably thinking, what is the Falcon doing with Captain America's shield and costume? Well, Steve Rogers' Super Soldier Serum was neutralized, and he started aging rapidly, so as to mask his real age, which is about 90 years old. Remember, that guy fought in the Second World War, he's really old. And Sam is the new Captain America now. Anyways, as I was saying, heroes turned bad and villains turned good. Of course, this meant that the X-Men no longer cared about normal humans and decided to take over Manhattan. They clearly had the high ground since Apocalypse had risen. Meanwhile, the Avengers decided to kill the Red Skull, even if that meant that they would also kill Professor X. Oddly, Hulk hadn't changed even though he was in Genosa, and was the only one thinking reasonably. The fact that the Hulk was actually thinking reasonably is enough to understand how bad the situation was. However, Hulk had also changed like the others, but no one realized it until they made him sad. And you wouldn't like when Hulk is sad, because that's when Klach comes out. Yeah, that's right, Klach, the Hulk's Hulk. And I have no idea if I'm pronouncing this correctly. Like, is it Kla with the silent H or just Klach? I'll call him Klach, it sounds funnier. Anyways, Klach seemed more intelligent than the Hulk, but he was way more violent and only cared about wreaking havoc in the entire city. The Avengers didn't really care, since he wasn't attacking any of them, and just continued to do what they intended. But the Red Skull wasn't in his cell anymore. The Avengers presumed that someone helped him escape, so they called every single superhero to a meeting to find out who helped the Red Skull escape. But it turned out that they didn't really care about who was responsible, so they just got rid of everyone by shrinking them to subatomic level. Spider-Man and Nova were the only ones who weren't shrinked, thanks to Spider-Man's Spider-Sense, which warned him of what was about to happen. Medusa and Captain America went after them, but Magneto saved them and took them to the Avengers Mansion. Steve Rogers and his son Ian were also there, and they informed them of what happened in Genosa. Meanwhile, the X-Men attacked the Avengers and tried to find the Red Skull, but they soon found out that he wasn't there. But it was enough for them that at least he wasn't imprisoned, and presumed that if he chose to resurface, he would join them. So they went ahead with their plan, which was to create a gene bomb that would kill anyone that doesn't have the X gene, anyone who isn't a mutant in Manhattan. And there was no one to stop them, since every hero was shrinked, except for Spider-Man and Nova. Okay, there was also Daredevil, but he was in the hospital after a battle with Iron Man, who had gone crazy. So the only thing left to do was to gather all the villains that became heroes. The very people who endangered mankind so many times seemed to be the only ones who could save it. Chapter 3 New World Disorder The inverted X-Men were ready to detonate the gene bomb after warning everyone in Manhattan that they were still time to get away from the city if they wanted to survive. So Steve Rogers assembled a new Avengers team to stop them. Spider-Man was assigned to defuse the bomb while Deadpool kept Apocalypse busy, but they didn't manage to do it as the language that was used to program the bomb was a celestial one that Peter didn't know. Meanwhile, in Latveria, Doctor Doom, Magneto and Quicksilver were trying to find a way to stop the evil Scarlet Witch from destroying Latveria and use her powers to cast a new spell. However, even these three couldn't stop her, so they had to think of another plan. Doctor Doom somehow made a deal with a demigod and resurrected Doctor Voodoo and Dino Drum, who could help them control the Scarlet Witch and use her powers. In Manhattan, it was only a matter of seconds before the bomb went boom. 
and Spider-Man couldn't find a way to defuse it. Unexpectedly, Carnage came and told Spidey that he was willing to sacrifice himself and covered the whole bomb with his symbiote. A few moments before the bomb exploded, Cletus made Spidey promise that he would build him a statue. Of course, Peter kept his promise and really made the statue. Carnage didn't actually die, however, but that's a story for another day. One threat was averted, but there still was a huge problem since the inverted Avengers wanted to kill everyone because they thought that the X-Men had taken the Red Skull. And I think the feeling's mutual for the X-Men. At some point, Apocalypse literally decapitated Deadpool, but he managed to survive thanks to his healing factor. Deadpool even convinced Apocalypse that Ivan was still in there and there was still good inside him, so Apocalypse became Ivan again. He was still jacked though. Meanwhile, Lucky teleported Thor to the moon where the latter had lost his hammer since he was unworthy. Thanks to the inversion spell, Lucky was actually worthy now and lifted the hammer, thus gaining the power of Thor. Then an awesome but short battle followed. Sam and Iron Man stopped fighting at some point as Tony realized that the X-Men didn't have the Red Skull. Now you're wondering, if the Avengers didn't have him, and if the X-Men didn't have him, where the heck was he? Well, where he was all along, in his cell in the Avengers Tower. He never escaped. What really happened was that Jarvis used the cloaking device to make him invisible and prevent the Avengers from killing him. Jarvis, Steve Rogers and Nomad were on their way to take him from there and protect him from the inverted Avengers. Steve wore an old exoskeleton of his, which he first used in Captain America issue 438, so that he could defend himself and the Red Skull, whose head was white now for some reason. But the exoskeleton wasn't enough in a fight against the Avengers. Thankfully, Apocalypse, or should I say even, with Deadpool's head, came to save the day. The good guys managed to get away, but after a while, Iron Man went after them. And just when you think that everyone was now doomed, here comes Doctor Doom, like a deus ex machina. Doom, Daniel Drown in Scarlet Witch's body, and the Red Skull, whose personality seemed more like Charles Xavier's, could now cast a new invasion spell. However, Iron Man was prepared for it, and created the shield that protected him from the spell, but since Havoc and Sabretooth were close to him, they also weren't affected. So there you have it. Iron Man and Havoc stayed evil, while Sabretooth was now good. Iron Man flew away, and so did Havoc, along with the Wasp. Oh, and did I mention that Doom and the Red Skull also escaped? A few days passed and everything seemed normal again. Now you're thinking, how did people forgive the X-Men and the Avengers for what they did? Well, the villains took care of it. Before the new inversion spell was casted, the villains recorded a video saying that everything that happened was their fault and they mind-controlled everyone. When Sam Wilson asked Steve Rogers why they did that, Steve's response was simple. It's the only way the world will ever forgive and trust the Avengers and X-Men again. After everything that happened, everyone learned from their mistakes. Humans and mutants were united again, and the Avengers Unity Division was assembled again. However, Tony was still evil, and that wouldn't change until the Earth was destroyed. But this, my friends, is a story for another time. Well guys, this was Axis, the story where we got to see heroes become villains and villains become heroes. I hope that you enjoyed my video, and if you did, be sure that I will talk about a lot more stories in the future. I know that many of you love Marvel characters and want to learn more about them, but you don't really like reading comic books, or maybe you prefer the movies, or you may not have access to some comics. Well, that's why I'm here. So, if you really liked my video, you can subscribe, click the like button, and allow all notifications. And until the next time, goodbye true believers!